What is up everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. We're also going to be doing a trading update talking about what I personally did today in the markets as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title and as you probably saw in the thumbnail as well, there is a group of stocks out there that I've been been crushed, crushed, absolutely beaten to the floor that I want to go over in this video, go over kind of what's been going on. And if I was forced to pick one stock out of the group, which stock would I pick out of these MJ stocks? So if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button. That's how you can repay me. Also consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat as well as our Strive Smart Facebook group. Those are linked down below if you want to be further connected with our community. So let's talk about the S&P 500 very quickly here, guys. And I am recording this video a bit early today with about 50 minutes left in the market. But as of right now, it's up $1.52, up 0.05%. So not much movement in terms of, you know, the overall uh, up or down in terms of the day, but if we zoom in a bit here to the five day, five minute, we can see that we actually hit an all time high today, guys, at $3,127.64. And the fact that we're holding the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA heading into power hour here, well, we're actually already in power hour, um, you know, heading to the close of the day, that is a very, very good sign that the bulls are still in control here, especially if. If we end up closing the day on a nice little upswing here, maybe even hitting another all time high. So the fact that, you know, those are, uh, you know, all those reasons are in place gives me the notion that. We are bullish right now in the S&P and uh, really across all the other markets as well once we look at those. So, you know, the S&P, that's what I'm looking at on this five-day, five-minute chart. If you're looking back on that hourly chart, one can argue that this may see a pullback soon, maybe down to that 50 SMA that we were talking about in yesterday's video, putting the S&P at around 3105, maybe 3110, maybe a pull down of about 15 to 20 points there. The RSI is a bit overbought. That's one reason why I'm thinking this. And honestly, over the past couple of weeks, we've seen it happen multiple times where we've ran up in the market, got a bit overheated, then ultimately sold off for a day or two before continuing the uptrend. We can see multiple times that that has happened. Once here, you know, once here, here, you know, four or five separate times over the past three weeks. So maybe we see that pull down before either you know, breaking below it, which would be a bearish sign, or like before, holding the uh, 50 SMA as a new support at a higher low before continuing the uptrend. So going to those other markets, uh, the, the other markets that I'm referring to here that also look bullish in my eyes still, Dow Jones being one of them, this one's actually down about 80 points, down 0.3% right now, but based on this hourly chart, it's still looking very bullish, right? So one can argue that the Dow, since it's already seeing a pull down, the S&P might be following that tomorrow, right? That's actually kind of what I'm thinking here. Again, going back to what I said on the S&P, because the Dow is already seeing that healthy correction that we've seen over the past couple of weeks happen multiple times. And the fact that we are holding that 50 SMA on this hourly chart, and if we go to this five day, five minute, you'll be able to see the consolidation there um, at a higher low. That's a really good sign that this is simply a retracement on the Dow and it wants to continue the uptrend. And if we zoom in a bit even closer on the daily chart here, um, you can see that very, uh, it's a very clear bottom, and we're starting to gap up here, um, heading into the last 45 minutes here of the session. Which, again, if we close very high like this, you know, on a nice high note, that's going to be bullish, leading me to believe that tomorrow could be a green day, um, at least for the Dow Jones here. So, that's kind of what I'm looking at on um, the Dow. It's similar to the SP in a sense, but it's already pulled down while the SP um, has 
hasn't quite yet done that, right? But we'll see if it does do it over these next couple of days. The NASDAQ right now, guys, doing the best out of the three, up 22 points, up a quarter of a percent here, 0.25 or 0.26 to be exact. And if we zoom a bit closer here to the hourly chart, um, you know, on the NASDAQ, we can see pull down occurred held that 50 SMA at a higher low. Now we're continuing the uptrend. This is a really good sign in my personal opinion that this already pulled down. Now we may be going up even further and ultimately hitting another all-time high, which would be anything above 83.79. So that's kind of what I'm seeing here, guys, um, especially since it's already seen its pull down and if we go back to that hourly chart you can see it it's it's really bullish um, based on all of these time frames you know five day five minute hourly chart and on the four hour chart as well so now let's talk about what I personally did today in the markets and a couple of stocks that I'm involved with right now so in terms of day trading today I didn't really do anything guys I'm simply riding my swing trades that I've been buying here over the past couple of days and some of those swing trades include PayPal ticker symbol PYPL started buying this one in the 102 103 range last week. Um, this is one that I've been eyeing up for a while now with a target to sell at about 110 bucks, maybe take some more profits at about 114 and probably get completely out of the position if we get up to 117 bucks. Another stock that I'm currently involved with is Chipotle Mexican Grill ticker symbol CMG started buying into this this one, I believe, in the 750s um, before we broke above this 50 SMA. Now I'm planning on adding a bit more. Um, didn't pull the trigger today, but I'm looking to add some more to this one. Um, you know, as we get closer to that 180 SMA, which is at about 800 bucks, where ultimately I'm planning to sell out of uh, most of my position and probably get out completely at about 835 bucks per share if we do get to that resistance level. Another stock that I'm in is McDonald's MCD. Pretty flat on this one in at about um, 193 bucks. Shopify I bought this one yesterday. A little down on my position but I'm still in with an initial position and uh, looking to add more if we do end up breaking and holding above $325 per share. So if I'm remembering correctly guys that's pretty much what I'm in right now. 5-6 swing trades and day trading. Not anything today. Um, just looking to really capitalize on these swings over these next couple of days and day trade when the opportunity presents itself. So now let's get into the stocks that have been absolutely hammered. And as you guys saw on the thumbnail, and you can see it on the screen right now on my watch list, these have been the MJ stocks. And we're using MJ as a code word here because I don't want to get demonetized from YouTube's very strict policy surrounding, uh, you know, drugs and all that type of stuff, you know, which is what um, MJ is at the end of the day, right? So MJ, these stocks, they've been crushed, right? We have Tilray here, and you can see pretty much based on the strength meter here on Thinkorswim, all of these are downtrending, right? Tilray, you know, OGI, NBEV, although this is not really a pure play. Um, MJ stock, it's been crushed either way. You know, Kronos has been demolished. CGC has been crushed. 52 down to 13 bucks, guys. This is carnage. This is blood in the streets of these MJ companies. Afria down so much. Probably, actually, um, this is probably the best performing one, um, although it's been crushed from 10 to 3 bucks, and that's saying something, right? You know, how Half of these have been crushed, uh, divided by five or six, while this one's been divided by about three in terms of what its price was months ago compared to what it's now. You know, ACB is one of those that's been divided by five, ten dollars to two dollars per share in the, in the span of six months. That is insane. So, what's been causing the blood in the streets here? Because we know that in 2014, 15, 16, up to 2018, marijuana or MJ stocks don't censor me. You YouTube, they've been on fire. They were on fire from that point. But ever since really last year up until now, these stocks have been crushed. And I did a bunch of research, guys, um, you know, took a bunch of notes. So if you enjoy and find value in what I'm about to share with you all, hit 
that like button. So really, guys, there's an oversupply of MJ right now due to an insufficient amount of locations to actually sell the product. And we've been seeing a lot of news surrounding Canada, which is it's legalized in Canada since 2018. We've been seeing news that they don't have enough dispensaries out there. They have a lot of product, but not enough dispensaries to sell to people. And what's this doing? This is actually decreasing the price of the MJ and squeezing those gross margins, squeezing that beautiful old profit that we all like to see, right? Another thing about the MJ industry right now is the rollout of cannabis 2.0. And cannabis 2.0, guys, what this is, it's pretty much a launch of a bunch of new products, including edibles, vapes, infused beverages, THC, uh, THC infused beverages. And this has been delayed um, really for a while now, up until its release, which is going to be in a month here in the middle of December. So over these past couple of months, you know, cannabis 2.0, it's been it's been pushed back. But a positive thing that we can draw from this is in about four months from now, I believe, is when we'll get the earnings from this launch of cannabis 2.0. Hopefully this brings a lot of new revenue to the companies and honestly a boost in the sentiment surrounding um, the MJ companies, which are a bunch of the ones that, again, we named here um, a couple of minutes ago. And you do notice that today, actually, the MJ stocks, um, they did quite well. You can see, you know, ACB up 3%, CGC's up about 7%, um, Cron up about 9%. And this is really because there's news that a congressional committee is advancing a bill that would lift the federal ban of cannabis or on cannabis rather and overturn past convictions. So that's a really nice catalyst that did end up spiking up these MJ stocks today. But if we're just looking again on a 20 day basis, they've been slaughtered. And even, you know, this green day here, um, it really didn't do much in terms of, you know, the price performance over these past couple of weeks because they're still down extremely um, a lot massively. Right. So if I was forced to buy a stock. And honestly, guys, I actually did buy a little bit of this stock today. But if I was forced to buy a lot of the stock in the MJ industry, what am I personally buying? Well, it's not Cron here, guys. It's actually ACB, also known as Aurora Cannabis. And this is a stock that actually reported earnings um, a couple of days ago. And since then, the stock has been crushed. We'll talk about what they did in terms of earnings, some key uh, metrics in a couple of minutes here. But like all the MJ stocks, guys, this one in specific has been slaughtered arguably the most from 1038 down to about 214, right? And why am I picking ACB out of, you know, CGC, Tilray, um, Afria, you know, OGI? Why am I picking ACB? It's really because in my opinion, and based off my research, and honestly, data, hardcore evidence, this stock has the most global exposure in the cannabis industry, right? They're active in 25 countries across five continents with 15 global production facilities. Medi medical cannabis leader in Europe as well as in Latin America. They recently purchased Pedanos, now known as Aurora Deutschland in Germany, which provides them first mover advantage in the single largest federally legalized medical cannabis market with a population of 82 million people. So now they have the Germany market, the German market under lock, which is a market of around 82 million people. That is incredible, right? First, licensed producer to ship medical cannabis to Denmark. They've also built relationships, substantial relationships with Italy, the Czech Republic, Poland, and Portugal. And of course, once the United States, you know, let's say that they, they, they have cannabis federally legalized here in the next couple of years, that's also going to be a massive market that ACB is going to try and get into, I'm assuming, right? So there's a lot of global action going on right now with ACB. And that's honestly why I'm liking it 
in terms of that aspect, right? If we're digging a bit deeper um, in terms of their valuation here, we can go on Yahoo Finance. You know, the year ending 629, June 29th, um, they really did about $250 million um, in revenue. That's a growth from the previous year that's quite substantial. Uh, they did $50 million that previous year. So that's a huge growth there. And with the recent chop down in their stock's price, their valuation went from about uh, like a $10 billion market cap down to a $2.44 billion market cap, which again is why I've nibbled into this um, stock. Because me personally, guys, I've been waiting to get into the MJ um, industry here for a while. I've day traded, swing traded in the past, but I haven't taken um, a long-term investment approach because the valuations were too sky high. And now that everyone's selling, I'm taking the contrarian point of view here of nibbling some shares. And I do plan on adding more um, if they get lower, especially into the $1 range. I'm looking to add more because at a price to sh sales ratio, sure right now of about an 11 this is technically the cheapest marijuana stock out of the biggest ones from my research that I'm seeing out there. And again, a 250 million revenue, um, you know, compared to the market cap of 2.4 billion, that is a bit crazy, right? But think about it. They're growing so quickly that once they get over these short term stumbles, being cash strapped, um, all that good stuff, well, bad stuff, really, you know, they could potentially grow into that valuation, um, especially as they get more deep into these European markets and really start to sell more with Cannabis 2.0 and especially if they get into the United States, right? So I think now the valuations have come to a point where it's, it's a good idea to consider this, right? It's a good idea to consider this. But one thing to also consider is the cons, right? There's a lot of cons involved with investing in MJ stocks. Obviously, as you can see, based on the stock's price, the stock doesn't fall from 10 to 2 bucks for no reason. We've talked about oversupply. We've talked about delay of cannabis 2.0. There's a lot of other stuff as well. Now we'll talk about ACB's specifics here. So they just reported earnings, like I mentioned. Right, 2020 fiscal 2020 quarter one results showed a 24% drop in revenue and a 30% drop in volume. So, right off the bat, that's why ACB um, got absolutely crushed here over the past couple of days. Literally, before their earnings report, um, they were $3.20. Now, after, they're about $2.20. They also reported that. They're suspending construction uh, construction at Aurora Sun and Nordic 2, two of its largest greenhouses under construction. And again, marijuana or MJ, sorry again, YouTube, MJ, they are strapped for cash. So they did this because by doing this, canceling these two production sites, they're going to save 190 million Canadian dollars. And that's very helpful right now for um, ACB, right? Another thing to keep an eye on and to consider if you're looking to invest is the potential dilution of their shares. Let me explain this a bit further. And this might be confusing for many of the viewers out there, but still, it's something worth mentioning here. Aurora has $230 million in Canadian dollars worth of convertible debentures that mature in March 2020, which could cause dilution of shares and devalue the current shares like I mentioned. So if we're rewinding back a bit, two years ago in March 2018, the company announced a private placement of these debentures. And if you guys don't know um, what a debenture is, a convertible debenture, it's pretty much a type of long-term debt issued by a company that can be reverted or converted rather into stock after a specified period. So they kind of have a, a decision in terms of um, that debt. So back to what I was saying in March 2018, the company announced a private placement of these debentures at an annual interest rate of 5%. The conversion price is set at 13.05 Canadian dollars. However, Aurora Cannabis has the right to force conversion of the debt into shares. According to the company's latest filing, this would be possible if the VWAP volume weighted average price of the company's shares surpass $17, guys, $17. And the fact that they're at $2, 
obviously they did not surpass that $17. So debenture holders at this point will not have any incentive to exercise the conversion to equity. This implies that the company must treat these debentures as debt and return the money to investors. And since Aurora Cannabis, guys, and again, a lot of these MJ companies, they're strapped for cash. They don't have a lot of cash on the balance sheet. What are they going to do now? They have this big debt coming up. What are they going to do? Welp, they're going to raise funds and maybe even issue um, they're going to issue new shares here, which when more shares come into the market, it devalues their current shares outstanding, right? Because more shares, more supply, that ends up dropping the price. So current investors, that's not going to be too good of a sign, the devaluation of the shares due to more shares um, being available. But that's why I'm nibbling in, guys. That's why I'm not going in all the way. So if the shares um, do end up dropping more, you know, over these next couple of months, I can end up scooping in um, and buying uh, and buying some more. And ultimately, you saw the screenshot of how much I put in. This is a very tiny position, guys. It's not even 1% of my uh, portfolio at this point. And again, I'm a younger guy, right? I'm invested in NEO as well. I figured I want to put some money in the MJ space. And if it gets low enough, guys, I might even start putting some money in an MJ ETF, which is literally ticker symbol. Symbol MJ. This tracks a lot of the major companies out there. CGC, uh, I believe Kronos, Afria, um, of course, ACB. So you can get exposure to all of them. But me personally, right now, I like ACB the most on an individual basis, which is why I'm buying in a bit. So let me know down below, what are your thoughts on the stocks? I'd love to know your opinion. Now let's go very quickly, rapid fire. Let's talk about a couple of stocks stocks and ETFs other than the MJ space that I'm watching right now. So a couple of key ones I have my eyes on right now, and honestly, a lot of them are the ones that I'm already involved with. So PayPal, guys, honestly, PayPal's doing quite well. Um, I'm looking for a further breakout, again, up to that $110 range. Um, Chipotle Mexican Grill, I like this one, especially since it broke that 50 SMA. A potential gap fill up to that 180 SMA is very possible here. Um, um, Roku is another one that saw a pull down today. Um, it seems like it's finding new ground at about 150, 152. So this could be a potential dip by heading forward here, uh, moving forward. Um, that could get us up to 163 bucks, where we can profit that upside of about five, six percent. Another one, Tesla guys, which did hit 360, um, like we were talking about over these uh, past couple of videos. This is one worth watching. And now that we're at this resistance 360 what are we going to do here are we going to pull down test 350 again maybe get in on the dip there that could be a nice dip buy from 350 back to 360 or are we going to completely shatter 360 move up to the next level which is going to be around 388 dollars per share and if we zoom out a bit to the three-year chart actually there's a level at 375 that i remember after that we may be going to the all-time high at around 390 and then maybe Elon Musk's wish of Tesla 420 may actually be a reality, right? So we might actually hit 420 um, like Tesla, uh, Elon Musk's CEO um, tweeted out a couple months ago, as you guys, um, I'm sure you guys remember that. So Tesla, that's definitely one I, I, I'm keeping my eyes on here. Um, you guys, D guys, guys, natural gas in general, just watching what that report um, is going to be like here on Thursday, 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We all know um, you guys has been getting crushed. Natural gas has been bearish over these past couple of days. Um, they reported 3 billion cubic feet uh, of an injection last week. Ever since then, we've seen this drop in natural gas, but a lot of people are projecting. I was doing some research on it. I think it's like a, a withdrawal of about 30 billion cubic feet this week. So if we get a ridiculous withdrawal, um, 
this can spike up natural gas in the snap of a finger just as quick as it was going down. So I'm kind of just waiting on the sidelines for this, to be honest, guys. Not actively trading it, just waiting to see what's going to happen again on Thursday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, that's really it for the video, guys. A lot of the other stocks in the market that are killing it, you know, you have Apple, uh, Microsoft has been crushing it here, guys. Netflix is trying to make a rally here. You know, maybe if we break 315, that could be a potential play. Or maybe even from here up to 315, that could be a play. So these are just some stocks um, that I'm watching. Facebook as well into the 200s today. Uh, maybe up to 205 is where we're pushing now. This is another stock that I'm involved with as a swing. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but I'm up a good amount on this one, looking to unload those shares at around 205. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group, link down below, as well as the Strive Smart merch if you want to rock a sick t-shirt or sweatshirt right now. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Let me know all your opinions down below. Peace out.